All right, uh, this is the J Wiki interactive visualization tool uh, that Bob, Devin McCormick, and uh, Roe Miller and I have been working on the last few weeks. The idea here is to provide a very fast, fluid navigation and search mechanism, not just for the J Wiki, but also for the J forums. And the approach that we take is a two-part user interface. Uh, on the left, we have navigation of the structure of the wiki and the forums, and I'll go into that in some detail. And on the right, we have a web browser, a web view, that allows us to load individual pages. The left side, the navigation is pretty much instantaneous. The right side, the navigation has to wait for pages to load from a remote server, and we'll see a lot of that. So I'll begin with Nuvoke. Uh, this is a compressed representation of Nuvoke. The idea is to fit it all into one small part of the display. Uh, hovering on a glyph shows you the valence links for that glyph. Hovering on the valence link will load the corresponding page. Uh, immediately below Nuvoke are the ancillary pages that show up in the um, conventional representation of Nuvoke, which is shown on the right. This is just the standard Nuvoke web page, which of course you have to scroll to see all of. Hovering on one of the blue labels will load the corresponding page in the right. And this is a typical interaction for this user interface. Um, almost all of the categories in the table of contents on the left wind up showing uh, at least some blue links, which represent web pages that you can load just by hovering. One of the more interesting sections is interfaces. Interfaces is uh, a little more complicated than ancillary pages. It's got subcategories. Uh, and because the all the pages and the subcategories will fit onto a single uh, single display, they're actually flattened out. So if you load QTIDE, for example, that shows you the category page from the wiki. J Android is the J Android category page from the wiki. And then underneath each of those subcategories, there are pages which can be loaded. Um, frameworks is more complicated still. Uh, so it's got so many pages that we can't show a flat representation. So instead, we show the subcategories, so add-ons, for example, which in turn has sub-subcategories for uh, API, ARC, convert, and so on. There's a databases category, which has JD, SQL, SQLite, and so on, labs, OpenGL, and so on. And again, the idea is, is that uh, you'll get a set of blue links for each of these categories, and the blue links can be hovered on to load up, um, to load up the corresponding pages. Uh, in addition to Bob's category hierarchy, which is mostly what we're navigating here, uh, we've got several hundred free-floating tags. These are uh, categories that don't participate in a tree. Um, they're exactly the same as the other categories. They just don't have a hierarchical relationship with one another. So we think of them as tags. Um, they're arbitrarily divided into groups of 15. So each of these uh, category names or group names with an ellipsis after it has a corresponding set of categories underneath it. Most of these categories have one or two pages in them, so there's not an awful lot going on. Um, an exception is uh, under DHM, which is Devin McCormick. Uh, there's a category development of the J Wiki that has a lot of pages, more than can fit in a straight ahead flat representation. So in this case, we have compressed columns. Um, and as you move to the right, the columns, the corresponding column decompresses and you can load, can load the pages. There's also a bookmarks mechanism. So I've got a few bookmarks here that I've saved. Hovering will load them. Uh, this is a set of the most recent pages that I've visited. Uh, if I bookmark a page, it shows up um, and I can load it up. It shows up in the bookmark section. Having bookmarked a page, I can unbookmark it and it will disappear from the bookmark section. The other major part of the table of contents is not does not reflect the wiki, but rather reflects the forums. Uh, and the interface here is a little bit different. So here's the J programming forum, J general, J beta, and so on, all the way down to J database. Uh, the idea here is to navigate by time. So this is uh, a year navigator for J programming 
And for each year, I can pick a month. Uh, and for each month, I've got a set of threads that show up in the uh, in the archive, the forum archive. Selecting a thread gives me a list of all the people who have contributed to that uh, thread and hovering on a person's name shows me that uh, corresponding post. The other thing I want to show is search. So searches are persistent across sessions. I've got one here where I was looking into uh, testing add-ons. These are results from the wiki. Again, you hover to load the page. There's also results from the J General. Quite a lot of results from J Programming, so much that it gets a little pathological. Probably not helpful. Uh, the upper limit on search results is 5,000. I won't request any more than that. 5,000 may be a little bit too high. But I can do um, additional searches. So I could say, for example, that I'm interested in static transpose. That search will appear, be executed. And again, I get a bunch of results in the wiki, even more in J programming, a few in J general, uh, and even a few in J forum, a, a forum that was um, retired some time ago, but its contents are uh, folded into the archive. All of this structure is actually kept in a SQLite database in temp. And the idea is it's got half a dozen tables in it reflecting structure, does not have any HTML in it. All the HTML, as I said, is loaded dynamically from a server uh, as you navigate. One of the tables in the um, database is a log table that we use for debugging. I'll just mention this briefly. Um, one of the problems with uh, errors in the field, bugs in the field, is that uh, they can be very hard to for the programmer to reproduce. And the approach that we took here is there's a log table uh, in the database that's normally unused, uh, but you can turn on its use by uh, clicking the debug log checkbox. And at that point, very granular logging uh, starts to take place, so much so that on a lower powered machine, it actually significantly slows down the user experience. Uh, so if you are having a problem and you can reproduce it, uh, and this actually just happened, um, uh, Bob very kindly sent me a bug report uh, in which he turned on logging, reproduced the bug, and then simply uh, attached the database file to an email and sent it to me. And I was reviewing that just before this session. And that is the story.